Here we go. Without question, M. Night Shyamalan is one of the more divisive directors not only working today, but of the past two decades. I'd argue that his record is one of the most inconsistent that we've probably ever seen from a filmmaker, and I think that that's a common agreement amongst most film fans. But I will always be there to support him with a new movie because he is continuing to make original content, and that's something that really needs to get more people watching it nowadays. And I also know that he continues to put forth his own money to create these movies. He doesn't typically get that much money from studios, they mostly just distribute the movie. So if I can go support it, I'm there. When it comes to Trap, I think it is one of his more disappointing movies that I've seen of his. But that's not to say that it's one of his worst movies. But as we get into the rest of this review, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and comment down below what are your thoughts or expectations on Trap. But let's keep talking about it. Now what I thought was just going to be a chamber piece where the movie would only take place in the concert actually is more of a half concert, half outside of the concert movie. And I do have to say that the first half of this movie did keep me thoroughly engaged. My favorite part and the best part about this movie is Josh Hartnett in the lead. He captures that menacing aura of sorts that a movie like this demands from its lead actor playing a serial killer. Some of his line deliveries honestly felt a little bit off, but that did feel intentional due to him being very just awkward almost interacting with regular people. I have to say that the dialogue is fairly cringy throughout. There were moments that had me going, oh, is this really what we're working with? Shyamalan has had a history of issues when it comes to writing and especially in the dialogue department. He did both write and direct this movie and it does feel like he's not only out of touch with pop culture and just doesn't really know how to write conversations that feel natural. Shyamalan has the word crispy used in here and I don't think I've ever heard that and it's supposed to be something that the daughter says to her dad and it's kind of like oh lingo. Another really effective part about the movie is the sound design. When the movie just focuses on the thoughts going inside the butcher's head and it's just focusing on him, the shot, where he puts an earpiece in to hear what's going on with the police. Very well crafted and clean sounding audio. Although I said I was pretty invested during the first half of the movie, I do think that the movie struggles the most when it comes to its tendency to rely on extreme conveniences. Plain and simple, it just felt like lazy writing. Oh, he needs something over here? Let it just magically come to him. He needs to get in touch with the police, hear what's going on. Let him just pick up a random police walkie-talkie without getting questioned at all. And this just continues to almost prove that Shyamalan continues to struggle when it comes to writing. Once the concert portion of the movie starts to die down, Salika Shyamalan, daughter of Knight, who is a singer-songwriter, she's in the trailer of the movie, and I honestly just thought that she was going to be just the person that is at the concert performing. But she actually starts to get a pretty decently sized role in the latter half, and unfortunately, you can tell that this is her first ever experience acting. It's a very weak performance. It obviously brings me no joy to really critique an actor, especially when it's the first time around, because God knows it's far from easy. But in this case, it just felt like, and I don't really like touching on this idea because I think plain and simple, if you are the best person fit for the role, then you should get the role. But when the idea of nepotism comes into it, it's very prevalent in Hollywood nowadays. This does feel like a case of that. Knight was of course just trying to be a good dad and try to help out his daughter, try to get her some more spotlight. So what does he do? He casts her in his movie in a pretty heavy supporting role. In a pretty demanding role too, she has to deliver on the emotional sequences and it doesn't work. And yeah, it just felt like an excuse for him to get his daughter out there and get some more attention onto her. maybe even get some more listeners to her music. It's one thing if you just wanted her to be the concert performer, it's another thing when you want her to have a larger role in the movie. And she can't deliver when it comes to acting. After they leave the concert, instead of the movie starting to pick up more, I just started to get more frustrated. And I started to drag and I started to lose interest. I've seen some compare Trap to Red Eye. I can see the comparisons in a lot of ways. It does feel like an evil person capturing an innocent bystander and having to deal with them, having to force them to complete the task to get out safely. But instead of that, I wish the movie, and it does a little bit, 
I wish it would have focused more on the family drama. The inherent idea of a husband's murderous drive propelling him into a life of crime and he doesn't really know which side he wants to be. Does he want to go full killer? This is a complex character. And I wish the movie focused more on the implications that come with having a dad who's a murderer, a husband who is a murderer. I think that would have been 10 times more interesting and it would have solved my issues with Salika Shyamalan's acting if you would have gave her less of a spotlight. Make you really feel for the family, especially when you get to the end of the movie and what, how it all resolves. There's also underdeveloped mommy issues that did feel like a pretty hefty chunk of that was cut. I vaguely remember hearing rumors that this movie was nearly three hours long, but this is definitely a movie that should have gotten rid of the nepotism, dude. Trap is more disappointing than anything else, and it bums me out to say that because I was really intrigued by the trailer, and this is just a simple concept that could have been really fun to watch. But instead, it just had me shaking my head. Josh Hartnett is great. I hope that he takes on more challenging roles like this. Props to Shyamalan for continuing to try something new, but it's a swing and a miss. I'm gonna give Trap a C, and I would just recommend streaming this one. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the movie down below in the comments. Maybe you liked it more than I did. Maybe you share similar thoughts. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. And again, if you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as well as that notification bell so you don't miss any further videos. And as always, look forward to more content coming soon. My name is Ben, people call me Meter, and I'll see you guys in the next one.